news. An earthquake has struck southern Turkey. The scene is one of total devastation. The displaced and missing continues to rise. I was thinking, earthquake? What do you mean, earthquake? I was scared and I started crying. You ask yourself, why Christian? He doesn't deserve this. He's a good boy. Why he? I couldn't cry that time because I think I was in shock. It's hard to go through it again. Going back home was a tough one because we were in bomb with a silver spoon in our mouth. Uh, you have to wake up at dawn. You either go on fishing or you go to the farm. And living with my 10 siblings and other extended family members was tough. Christian, I'll say he loves football. He doesn't like waking up at dawn going on the river in that cold time is no good. He, he preferred to be on the field. At that time, if your child is always on the field, they see it as a stubborn kid. And Christian is always intelligent. But as a father, seeing your intelligent son always on the field, coming back late, you wouldn't be happy. When I brought him to Accra here, he started playing with the children there when he was like nine, even from eight. Initially, I didn't support it because I was the one who was taking care of them. So then my intention to go to school, but he wanted to pray. He was somebody who believed in himself. And he tells you he sleeps and he dreams that he's playing football. And at the point you would think he's hallucinating. But as time goes on, we realized and got to understand what he was made of, what was in him, and what he wanted to do. He was very determined to play football. One of his brothers came from their village, and he introduced Achu for me. He said, Coach, I have a young brother who is very talented. Achu was very intelligent and very respectful and confident because he's a God-fearing person. That is why. So when he came here, because of how he lives, he gets friends. So he feels like he's at home. When he was 13, 15, he was very happy because he has a friends. And he's the, we, we used to call him Maestro. That is the name, and we have some name given to him. We call him Devio. The meaning of Devio is somebody who is, their body is a little small. But he play bigger football. We, we all have, have been seen Achu as a great player because we have not even got a talented player like Christian Achu. Because sometimes when you give him chance to play, you will not understand. You ask yourself, why? Is it what I'm teaching you? That is what you are playing because you play more than what I teach you. So from there, we all have some confidence that Atu will play a very big club. Well, I remember it was uh, in the year 2008. I was working for a FIFA agency called Ramp Management. I was the chief scout of them in Ghana and West Africa. So they wanted me to scout some players and then uh, they were bringing the chief scout of Sporting Lisbon. He was called uh, Paulo Cardozo by then. I've uh, got um, about 15 boys and I arranged a game against Feyenoord. 
So that was the first day that we saw Christian. He was playing for Fire Nord. When the game was going on, I saw Christian and I told the scouting team that we were moving with that the boy moving on the flanks will be a good player. After the game, Sporting Lisbon sent invitation for the four players and uh, we brought the invitation to Fire Nord to invite Christian to go to Sporting Lisbon on trials, but Fire Nord declined the invitation in 2008. It was uh, not easy to have clubs like Sporting Lisbon Porto coming over and even sending you invitations. So um, honestly, it was like a world opportunity for him. Charlie, how's the training, man? Good. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. After one and a half years of um, trying to sign Christian from uh, Fire Nord, as soon as we got him, uh, I made contact with Ramp Management to say that finally we've been able to secure Christian. And they actually brought in an invitation from FC Porto that he should come on trials. I was actually on holiday um, in Portugal with family and friends, and he currently played uh, for Rio Ave. And then we met in the same hotel. And I have one of my friends who was football mad, so she wanted to have obviously um, an autograph and everything, picture, uh, but she couldn't speak English. So it was on me because I was the only one who spoke English and he was the only one who spoke English. And um, so, yeah, he gave me his number and that's basically how we met. He was a very kind and very young. <laughs> you could feel he was very open. He wasn't like some footballers. They might come across maybe arrogant or something, but he wasn't at all like that. He called me and said, Christian, I'm dating. I've met a lady. Um, if she calls you, you better be nice to her. <laughs> I've not seen Christian dating before. So I was surprised when he called me that he have met a girl. So because I've not seen how him dating before, I don't really want to interfere. And I've seen that he really loved this woman. The Premier League is it's entertainment for a lot of Ghanaians. Um, it represents the best of what football can offer. For a lot of people, it was exciting for us to see him, but also following in the footsteps of perhaps the biggest football export we had sent out in a very long time. To play for Chelsea was like his biggest dream ever. And uh, he was so happy to sign with the club. He was looking forward to play for Chelsea and then they loaned him out. Um, he was a bit upset or sad, but he was still hoping to play for Chelsea every single day. At that time, there was top stars at Chelsea. Um, he's coming from Porto, he's got a bit of Champions League experience. Um, he was still very young at that time. Christian is a type of player that he just accepts. He doesn't complain. So when he knows that he has to go to Vitesse on a loan deal, Everton, etc., he knows that, okay, they're sending me on loan because they want me to prove myself. He was fearless. All he wanted to do on the field was to give to whichever badge he was representing. He was doing all he could to come back and remain in the Premier League. So when Newcastle came for him, he was very happy and he was determined to make it in the Premier League. When we moved in to here in the house, it was very like, okay, we arrived home now. And it was feeling like, okay, we can settle down with the kids. They can go to school. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It's like, you know, all the years before we had to travel all around, so it felt good just to be on one place for a few years. He was happy with the clubs, with the players, with the coach. 
because he got the support that he needed. He, he was so impressed when I think when he went the first time into the stadium and played, he was like, wow, that atmosphere is amazing. Like all the fans shouting, you know, supporting. And yeah, he loved it. There was a huge sigh of relief generally in Ghana when he signed because we were so desperate to see him succeed in England. We did not want, we wanted to, for him to forget those Chelsea memories. And it looked like he was making new ones at Newcastle. I think some of the best football he played in England was played with Newcastle. I feel very proud that you get people calling me at times to say, hey, your boy is playing. He's playing very well for Newcastle. You need to watch him. So uh, it was a proud moment and he was a point of inspiration for uh, the boys in Cheetahs. I enjoyed his company in the dressing room. He was always positive, you know, always worked hard. His, uh, his abilities um, uh, as, a, as a player were, were, were really high and, and, and especially in the dressing room, I thought he was a uh, top, top player and, and, and top person and obviously to see that he tried to have so many people. Um, it's always nice to see um, if, if people want to help each other. Thanks. I mean, I think it's also for obviously the younger generations is to see that you can achieve something even when you come from a place where you maybe don't have anything. But if you obviously work for it and believe in yourself, you can reach the top as well. In 2016, we were working with an organization in UK called Arms Around a Child. They came for a visit and they brought Christian Achu as an ambassador. We were then operating in an uncompleted um, structure um, and the kids were so, so much happy when they met him. He went to their various classrooms, interacted with them, had photographs with them. He was just a simple person and embraced everybody. When he came for the first visit, after interacting with their children, he asked them what they wanted him to do to support them. And then the kid says um, they wanted a school because by then where they were schooling, wasn't of a uh, standard. It wasn't good. The structures were falling apart. He promised them that he was happy and he was going to come back to visit. Actually, we thought it was just a promise. But the following year, he wrote to me that he was coming to visit. The school is completed now. The standard that we have set here is very good and the children are happy. We have our computer lab, we have our library, even the classroom has ceiling fans, slides and stuff like that. So you see that the kids are very happy and makes teaching and learning very easy. It was so important to him because of our background. He feels when somebody is in need. Even if it means he giving out his last peswa, to make sure somebody else is safe. Those are the kind of things he finds delight and those are the kind of things he finds joy in doing. It's not everyone who has suffered to attain that is willing to give back to society. He went through a lot of troubles, problems, challenges, but after he has attained higher height, he was ready to give. So I saw a sign of humility, a sign of giving. He missed Ghana, he, he loves Ghana and he lives for Ghana. He always said when he would retire, he would move back to Ghana because that's his hometown. It's like he enjoys it so much and he loves the people. Breaking news, a 
massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake has struck southern Turkey. One of the most powerful earthquakes to hit the region. The quake happened early Monday morning. The devastation unfolding now. After a 7.8 earthquake shook the region, more than 1,600 people. The number of displaced and missing continues to rise. Number of people trapped under the rubble is unknown. And thousands have been injured. Really, really sad times in the neighbourhood for those affected and for the families, obviously still waiting on news. One of the club's representatives gave me a call, I think around five in the morning. I was thinking, no, this is too early, I, I, I'm not gonna pick up. And then he called again, and I thought, for him to call the second time, he knows definitely what time it is. There is a reason for this call. So I said, hi, Togar, how's it going? He's like, no, 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 no. There's been a massive earthquake. Christian, have you heard from Christian? I believe his building has collapsed. And I was thinking, earthquake? Um, what do you mean, earthquake? And how is earthquake collapsing buildings? I was very naive in that respect. I've never experienced an earthquake to that magnitude. And I heard it over the radio, and I was just basically saying to my mom, ah, it's fine, it's not his area, because I was like, no, there's no way that that's, that's exactly the area where he's living. So I was like, uh, like in shock. It's like you can't really believe it, that obviously something like this happens to someone that you know. Because he always talked about himself like nothing could happen to him. He talked to his children obviously on the Saturday. I've written a message with him on Sunday. Basically I just said good luck, you know, and then I said congratulations for the goal and everything, and then basically just some small stuff we talked about. That was basically it, so he was supposed to call on Monday. On the Monday, there was a report obviously saying that he has been found. I was driving the car, and I, in the morning, obviously we got the call saying he has been found. He has been taken to hospital, he has been found. And I told that my children, when we went to school, and obviously when I picked them up, um, we heard in the radio, we heard in the radio saying that that report was misleading and that he hasn't been found. And my oldest son sat next to me saying, mom, why are, why are you lying about it? And I was just like, well, I didn't. But obviously that's what I thought was true. I always said to myself, no, he's a, he's a strong man, you know, he believes in God, he's all right, and he will come out alive, even if he's injured, but he will come out alive. And um, so that's basically what I told myself every single day. When I got to that place and they showed me that that is the building, I was devastated. Everywhere was collapsed. And when I was there, I noticed I don't felt him around me. So we have a connection, even if Christian is not around me, I felt him. So one of his friends said, I should be, how do you feel? I said, I don't feel Christian around me and it's strange. And I could remember when I was in Turkey, I, I continue feeling sick, like feverish. So I think that is the sign that it's telling me that I'm not, um, I'm not around you anymore, yeah. It's not an easy um, process to go through, let's say. I haven't slept, I think, in that two weeks. It was almost two weeks, I think I would say. Or oh, it felt like it, <laughs> until obviously we found him. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's hard to go through it again. <laughs> the day that we found the body was like, I think it was 3 a.m. Um, we got a call from one of the workers basically saying that they have, they said that they have, um, they believe they found a body that looks like Christian. I just got this cold chill.
He went, his agent called me in the morning, like 3 a.m. I knew, because you don't call someone at 3 a.m. saying, oh yeah, he's still alive. And he was just calling me and saying, I'm so sorry. And uh, I couldn't cry that time because I think I was in shock. I was like, no, maybe it's not him, you know? And he was like, no, it's him. We've seen him, we've seen his body. So, so yeah, it was not, not nice, not nice, no. I knew later that morning that God has sorry, later that morning that God is going to call you home. And life alone. My older son still doesn't talk about it. It's, it's not easy because you get reminded every single day, especially for my youngest as well. She drew a picture a few days later and saying, oh, can you send that to my dad? And uh, she has done the same on Christmas as well, saying, oh, don't forget to, pit, to send the picture to my dad. I think because of my kids, I kept going. If it was just me, I think I would just lay in bed all day and do nothing. That's what I wanted to do. Even until now, it's still the same. It's like when people ask me, how do you cope? I don't. I don't cope, but I don't have any other chance. With players, with athletes, um, I feel like we should tell them how we feel about them when they are alive. I mean, the outpour from um, the football community. Um, it was amazing. It was, it was amazing. I just wish um, Christian was able to witness how much he was loved by the footballing community. It was sad, twisting, but I thank the whole world for uh, what they did to the family. They showed that even they love the boy. So I saw him in my dream. He came to me. When he came to me, you know, it's like we are talking and then he's wearing top white, down white, and then he shaved his head neat. And he's laughing at me. He's laughing at me and I said, so when I wake up, I started crying. I remember the day that I left Kristen at the airport to FC Porto for trials. We had an, an arrangement with um, a team in Ghana that Christian was going on trials. If he didn't make it, he'll come and then play for them on loan. They gave me, they gave me some money and we, we took part of that money to buy clothes and other stuff for Christian to travel. When he sat on the plane, he sent me a text message saying that uh, I should spend the rest of the money because where he's going, he's not going to come back. He's going to play football to the highest level. And then the world was going to hear of the name Christian Achu. Everybody in Ghana knows him. There are people who are shy to associate with their families. There are people who are shy to relate to people because of what they have done or what they are doing. But by the grace of God, everybody would want Christian to come from his family. He always knew what he wants. And if he wanted something, he would fight for it. If he can, he would want to support the whole world. So he was a very kind and loyal man. We might struggle to find a footballer in this generation, Ghanaian generation, who is as genuine as he was. The way he played, the way he lived his life, he was uninhibited by his status, by the modern game. His game was to bring joy, and he did that. 
immeasurably. He's gone, but he's still alive. Christian's name will live forever. He's a hero. <laughs>